Okay, so hi, welcome, Mark Anderson. Um, and um, at the moment, we've just got one person in here, so I won't do the whole Della sort of intro. Uh, but thank you very much for joining me for the session today. And if you're watching back on YouTube afterwards, I hope you find uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you today helpful and useful. Uh, the session today is going to explore how we can sort of um, inspire a bit of creativity in our learners um, when it comes to um, a whole variety of different uh, activities in the classroom. Um, I'm just going to uh, check my phone a second because we had some problems with this session yesterday. I'll make sure there's going to be two tweeting saying, Mark, I can't get in. But as soon as you're here, I think we're probably, we're probably a OK. Um, so um, just uh, as I mentioned before, though, we are I am recording the session. So uh, if you're speaking and things yourself, uh, then uh, you'll, you'll be uh, able to um, uh, be, be heard and, and so forth and so on. So I'm just going to share my screen. And um, just going to jump into a PowerPoint presentation that I've got prepared. So just opening my uh, PowerPoints uh, now. And that's not the right PowerPoint presentation. This is not the best of starts. So let's just uh, come back out of there a second. Definitely a day for things to go wrong. Um, I've now managed to go into my meeting and set up a new meeting. So that's again not a very good look. Let's just jump back into here. And hopefully I'll be able to go back into here and show my desktop instead. OK, fantastic. So you can now see uh, Paint 3D there. And uh, for those of you that can hear me speaking, can you, me, can you see my PowerPoint presentation now? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so it's about inspiring creativity with paint and PowerPoints. Uh, I've called it a winning combination. There's a number of reasons why I think it's a winning combination, because you know, lots of teachers and students uh, as well, when you're asking them to use PowerPoint, uh, will often spend more time on making text go blah, 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 end with animations and, and don't really use it for uh, really uh, interesting and innovative purposes. So I'm going to try and show you some ways that you can tie together some of the features of PowerPoint. Uh, so that it can really uh, uh, not only support learning, um, enhance learning uh, in the classroom as well, uh, but um, really help our learners um, really engage with subject contents and all of these different things. So why would we want to choose to use Paint and PowerPoint? Well, there are lots of reasons, I think. Uh, for me, um, it reduces the efforts. Uh, it, it can really promote creativity in our learners and it, it can save an awful amount of time. You can create really sort of wow moments, um, you know, rather than just using standard items, you can bring in things such as you can see on the screen here. Uh, you can even be uh, a little bit uh, cheeky if you want to. You've got all these animations that you can bring in. Um, and because it's three dimensions, you have got the full three dimensions <laughs> to actually work with uh, and uh, everything with inside PowerPoint as well. Now, PowerPoint itself does come with lots of 3D models built in. Um, here's a nice 3D model uh, of the human heart. And, and as uh, we saw before with the animations, you can actually animate these things within your slides so that they can do things like this. So we can see the one side of the heart there, but on the other side, uh, we can go around the back and we can see all the various parts inside the heart. So you can see the bicuspid valve, the tricuspid valve, you can see the and various ventricles, the aorta, so, so forth and so on. Now, I'm not a science teacher, so I'm not going to start uh, using the laser pointer and pointing all those things out, but I remember some of those things from my A-level biology days. Um, there are loads of ways, though, that we can actually uh, incorporate these really, really great uh, things into our PowerPoint presentations. So to start with, I'm just going to jump out from my actual presentation. I'm going to show you how you can actually go about putting some of these 3D models in, because um, Surprisingly, lots of teachers that I speak to and uh, work with have never actually heard of this sort of stuff. Um, and you can even get animated ones as well. So you can see that the heart's actually beating here now on the slide in front of me. If I click on that, I can actually engage with that and interact with it and, um, and sort of rotate 
the Haas and things directly within here. If I can get that sort of working, there we go. So I can be moving the Haas around. I can use my um, trackpad or the screen if you've got a touch screen and uh, to uh, sort of zoom in to different parts. So I wanted to show those valves, uh, for example. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one's which, but we have got the um, two valves here. I think it's supposed to be the tricuspid valve here and the bicuspid valve just here uh, that allows um, blood to flow in and out of the heart and, and what have you. So dropping these uh, various things into our uh, slides is really, really easy. And there's a huge library of these different 3D models that you can actually drop into uh, your PowerPoint presentation. So let's drop in a blank slide a second just here. OK, uh, on your insert ribbon just here, you've got an option called 3D models. Now you can and we'll refer to, I'll refer to this later. Uh, you can bring these in from a file and there are lots of websites where you can actually uh, download 3D models uh, for you to use that are Creative Commons free that can be linked to a topic that you're teaching. Ruben Puentejura talks in his summer model about using technology to do things that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the technology. And certainly in science subjects, there are loads of things that are really quite difficult to explain to students when they, they, can't, they can't really get a context. And a picture in a book is, is lovely, but actually, you know, being able to see, even with this example here with the heart beating uh, and, and uh, whatnot, it, it's really, really powerful to sort of see these different things. So on this drop down here, you've got two options as from a file. Like I say, you can download some uh, from some sites and uh, I'm going to be showing you how to use Paint 3D in a moment to make your own 3D models as well, um, which again is, is super, super simple. Um, but if you were to save that as a 3D file in Paint 3D, then this is where you would go to bring that in. Although I'll show you a much easier way of doing that um, in a few moments. But if we go to from online sources here, it then brings it up so you can see uh, there are um, loads and loads and loads of 3D models that you can pull through um, to use inside your presentations from uh, little avatars, uh, which could be great for popping on the side and uh, just to be animated uh, whilst the story is being uh, recorded over the top of some text that's on the screen from a child in, in year three or four. There are lots of ways in which you can use these different um, characters and, and things, gadgets, shapes, um, animals, you know, fantasy objects, unicorns and, um, and dragons and monsters and lots and lots of different uh, things that you can choose uh, to drop in. And I found the, the heart animation, for example, in Animated for Education. And you've got animated animals in here as well. All sorts of different uh, things that you can choose to drop in uh, to your uh, PowerPoint slide. So I go into here and I'll just pick this dinosaur, for example. I go to inserts and it's as easy as that to actually drop in a, a model from the library that's available to you. But depending on your connection speeds, it'll take a moment or two to bring that through. And you can already see now the dinosaur is here on my screen sort of running towards me. Ah, scary, scary. Um, you can see um, just by clicking in the center here, we've got this little icon here by clicking and dragging in the direction you want to rotate the model. It will allow you to do that uh, quite easily, like so. You can rotate it on a 2D axis like that if you want to, rather than the 3D axis. You can stop the animation here. You can also stop it by going to the pause button at the top here as well. You've got a load of ways in which you can sort of change how it's viewed as well in the 3D model views at the top here. There are lots of options um, that you can choose to use to uh, sort of work with your model on your actual PowerPoint slide. There, the, the uh, dinosaur. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a kudos point if you can tell me what dinosaur that actually is at the end of the session. Um, so it's really easy to, to do these, bring them in, so forth and so on. But this is about paint and PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to jump into um, paint. And if I just do that very quickly, there we go. Um, so here, here is paint 3D. Um, and uh, if I think back to when I first started using paint 
probably about 2000, you know, in the last 20 years, things I've moved on Im immensely, hugely um, in, uh, those, the, in, the, in those, those years. And as you can see on your um, bar across the top here, you've got a whole bunch of different options, one of which uh, is 3D shapes and the other is 3D library. And so what you can do inside your 3D library, if you go on to here, you'll now see that you've got a whole bunch of different collections here that you can access as well. So this is how I did that little welcome animation on the chalkboard. OK, I went through into here and uh, one of the options in here, if I can find it again, uh, is classroom down the bottom here. If I go into the classroom collection, so you've got lots of classroom related 3D models that we can actually bring in. So how did I go about doing the chalkboard one? Um, and how do I animate it? How do I do all of that? Well, it's super, super simple. To bring it in, I just clicked on it on the side over here. It tells you it's loading it. it takes a few seconds and there it is. Now, just like we saw in PowerPoint a second ago, we've got a bunch of handles that we can use to rotate, resize and move and so forth and so on. Something that I'd like you to be mindful of when you're doing this sort of work as well, though, is that we're dealing in three dimensions now rather than just two dimensions. So there's space behind that canvas of paper and there's space in front of that paper. Now, at the moment, that chalkboard is in front of the paper. If I use this option here, OK, on the Z axis, you can see if I go too far back, it actually disappears behind the canvas. I can bring it right, right forwards. And I always recommend with this sort of work, if you want to make sure that you can see and uh, have everything available to you, bring it a, quite a bit in front of the canvas uh, like so. So how did I go about putting the welcome on? Well, it was really, really easy. All I did was I simply used the zoom tool up here to zoom in a little bit. Not quite that close. Uh, I then went to my brushes option here at the top. And over here on the right hand side, then we've got loads of different brushes available to us. We've got our simple marker. We have a calligraphy pen, oil brush, watercolor, pixel pen, so forth and so on. We've got the eraser here and we've got the crayon and spray can and a fill bucket. I'm going to go for the crayon option. And over on the side here now, we've got these different options available to us. This one here is the one we have for our different tool selector. In here, we have the adjustments, the different variables that we can change, such as opacity and the thickness of the thing we're using. And here we have the colors. So I'm going to go into here, I'm going to change the color to white. And I'll just click on it again to uh, I'll click away to hide it away. And what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to use, and I would use my stylus, but unfortunately, literally last light, my son has managed to snap the nib off and I haven't got a spare pencil. So I'm going to I'm just use my finger today. But simply just write what you want onto that model. So welcome. How do you think I then managed to get the, this is a rhetorical question. <laughs> How do you think I then managed uh, to get to the back of the item, to draw on the back, well, I simply use the rotation, free rotation handle to rotate the option here. And I wrote the other stuff on the back. OK, and it was as simple as doing that. So how do we then get this into uh, PowerPoint so we can interact with it and use it and so forth and so on? Well, again, it's super, super easy. Don't forget at this point as well um, to go to the select tool so you can actually make sure you've got your object selected. Now, the easiest way that I do this is just at this point now, I will just go to control and C for copy. I'll then just go back to the tool that I'm wanting to go to, which is PowerPoint. So I'll just drop in uh, a new slide a second. On the insert ribbon, I'll go to new slide. I'll choose a blank one. There it is, and I'll click into the slide space and I'll press Control and V. And that will then paste in my 3D model. It'll take a few seconds because it's a bit bigger than a standard photo. There's more information in there, so it's not going to be as quick as it would be with a, a sort of flat two dimensional image. But once it drops in, you will get all the same options as you had uh, with the other models and things that you've seen so far in this presentation. 
So it's taken a few seconds, saying PowerPoint isn't responding, but that sometimes happens when we're asking it to do uh, a bit more than we would like. Uh, I'll just try and paste that again because it hasn't come through. Oh, here we go, it's inserting the 3D model now, fantastic. And there it is. And just like we saw with the other models, we can use the free rotation tool to rotate it around like so. Easy peasy. What I did in order to make this one move around on slide three back a lot, all I did was go to the animations option. And because PowerPoint recognizes this as being a 3D model, we get a variety of different three dimensional options for us to have a little play with. So one of them, for example, is swing, one turntable. That's what I used before, turntable, to uh, make it turn around. And if you click onto the animation option, uh, so it should give you a little preview of what that looks like. And you can now see that 3D model uh, just sort of moving around. Now, that's great, but um, something that I, uh, thank you very much, something that uh, I've always shared with my students um, when working with technology, particularly when things aren't auto saved, if you're not working in the cloud, it's to save early and save often. And so it's really important that we save the things that we're doing. Now, you can save um, 3D um, objects in Paint 3D in lots of different ways. Um, to do that, simply go to your menu and then go to save. So you can save it as an image, as a 3D model, as a video, or a Paint 3D project. Now, I would always recommend, if you want to sort of go back into any of these things later on, save it as a Paint 3D project, because then, you, as it says here, you can then edit the project later and, and change things, tweak things. If you've forgotten to put something in, you know, you, you save it as a 3D model, it's rendered to that, you can't then edit it or change it, okay? Um, but I actually advocate for doing it both ways. So save it as a Paint 3D project, so you can go back in and um, edit it and mess around with it later on. Or you can simply just go to, and so once you've done that, simply go to 3D model and save it as a 3D model. Now, if you save it as a 3D model, it will then save it to wherever you've chosen to save it to, whether it's your OneDrive or wherever. And then this is simply an easy, easy case of just popping um, yourself back into PowerPoint. If you remember that little drop down, uh, I'll just jump back into PowerPoint a second. On the insert menu, uh, ribbon, sorry, you'll remember we saw the 3D models drop down insert from a file that's where you can then find that file that you've just saved in paint 3d and bring it through like that so a variety of ways you can do all those sort of things but as i said i'd always advocate that you um, and, and recommend that you save yourself a paint 3d file as well so if you want to go back in and edit it you can now, there are lots of uh, different um, models that you can bring through from paint 3d here's a, a little origami rabbit that i brought through onto the presentation, which you can put in, and it's fantastic. But one of the things that I really love uh, that you can do with Paint 3D is take some of these wireframe models they've got available to them and then sort of make them your own. So here's one uh, Blue Peter style that I made earlier. OK, little uh, clown fish a la Finding Nemo. And you can see I've done both sides and there it is with a big smile and hello <laughs> and those sort of things. So how do you go about doing that sort of thing? But again, it's really, really easy. So I just come out of here a second by going to, uh, I'll just go to new. I don't want to save this one. Before I showed you that there were 3D shapes and there was a 3D library. The 3D library is where we brought through the chalkboard and uh, we used, you saw these other options. But because of the 3D shapes option here, we have got available to us now through this uh, section here, a whole load of different 3D objects. And one of those, as you can see down the bottom, is the fish option. So what I did to make the little Nemo, uh, I was I clicked onto here. And at the moment, the color selection is white. OK, but I want to make a clown fish. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to go onto here and I'm going to choose orange. Now, I could have kept it white and I could have then painted over the top, 
OK, in fact, I will do that for a second. Uh, I'll just pop it to there and so to drop the fish in. I simply click onto the canvas and it drops the fish in, but it's white. So I want to uh, paint that. Right. To do this, we simply go to our brushes tool and uh, I'll choose one of the brushes. Uh, let's just go for, let's say, this one here and I'll make the color orange. Now, if I was to um, and this is a lovely feature, I think, inside um, Paint 3D. If I start to colour in around the outside of the object, can you see it isn't actually going on to the object itself? OK. So that's really nice because it's not going to actually impact on the object that I've got there. Just press Control and Z to undo that a second. What I think is equally lovely, though, is if I start to now do the colouring in on top of the 3D model, it stays with inside the model itself. So even though my finger is going all over the place, and this is great for those sort of younger students who do struggle with a bit of fine motor control, this is a super easy way to colour things in. Now I'm just going to go relatively quickly with this. And they'll be too perfect with it. Something that's important to remember, if you are coming in a 3D object, it is a 3D object. And so whilst the part of the image, the model you can see now is coloured in, as you can see, if I just rotate this around a little bit, we need to make sure we colour in every element inside. And so as we're starting to colour it in, make sure um, that you rotate it around and it's not it's not as simple a case as actually just doing it. Um, it's not simply a case of doing it in those two sides either. You'll still need to sort of flip it around a bit and find that the, where the joins are and the bits you might have missed. I've missed under the fins there, so forth and so on. So I love the fact that we can colour these things in and I want to show you how we can make it so the colours stay within the lines, so to speak. I'm going to delete that now. Uh, I'm going to go to select. I'm going to select the object and I'm just going to remove that from there. So I want to bring in um, one which is already colored in automatically. So I'm going to go to my 3D shapes again. The fish is already there. The color is orange. And so now when I click onto my canvas, it drops in automatically the orange fish. So taking what we've learned already, OK, let's bring this forward a little bit on the canvas so it's not going to be too deep for us to better, not better do what we're going to do. We can then really simply use the brushes tools to then start to do things like, so I'll just grab one of these and I'll make the thickness uh, relatively big. I'll make the color white. And I can now, with relative ease, click onto here and draw myself my eye. If it's not quite the right uh, angle, you can always bring it around. And it's actually quite a good idea when you do this sort of thing to actually make it so you can see both sides at the same time. So you end up with things lined up nicely and uh, what have you. But it's super easy to sort of start building the various elements that you want to go on there. Now, I don't want you to sit watching me paint in a clownfish. So again, in Blue Peter style, Here's one I made earlier. And again, it's not a particularly long job. I just wanted to sort of cut through the time that you're with me because the time we've all got is very valuable. So as I select this object now, you can see if I rotate it around, you can see that I've done the eyes, I've done the render sides, I've put some little black marks on the fin, I've given it a smiley face, happy days. And just like we did before, it's super easy to just copy it, control and C, and then just go back into your presentation. And then we can just press control and V. And it will bring that object into PowerPoint again. Just brings it straight in and we've now got two. Now, if you wanted to create a school of fish, very simple to just do the control and C control V and replicate it. Um, and then we can just uh, from that uh, point, just then make another one slightly different in terms of size. So it could be that you've got 
you know, your big clownfish and your baby clownfish. Not mentioning any films, but um, you've got these these ways you can sort of bring things together. So um, that's that part there. So how can we use this in terms of learning? Well, there are lots of ways we can actually use all these things we've learned so far in terms of learning. I've got an, a real life example um, on the next slide in a second. But there are many ways that we could do this and tie it into activities that we're doing. What if we're doing a literacy project and we want to uh, do some creative writing? Well, not just can we do the creative writing, we can use, and I, I, could, I could have called this session today all manner of different things, because what I'm hoping to try and do is show you and share with you ideas where you can really stretch and push the boundaries of how you use PowerPoints, because it isn't just a presentation tool. It's not just something you use on a staff inset or a staff meeting to run through bullet points. It's a really, really fantastic and creative tool. Don't forget as well, actually, we've got loads of things like icons and shapes in here, great shapes library, even if we're not thinking about the 3D stuff. There's so many amazing things that we can do uh, with our um, use of PowerPoint. But what I wanted you to think about today was about using PowerPoint and Paint as a storytelling uh, tool. Again, there are many, many different ways in which we could uh, choose to take on board these ideas. It could be, you know, if we made a, a, a 3D model of something in chemistry or physics or um, geography, it could be a representation of um, coastal sea defences. It could be all manner of different things. But using the animation tools that we have with inside PowerPoint, I want you to think about how we could perhaps use it in a bit of storytelling. So here we've got a slide. And I've taken that same clownfish. I've dropped in a background image. And uh, as you'll probably know, uh, and if you don't, please do check out on the insert picture option. Uh, there are not just loads of things you can do in terms of bringing pictures from your own machine, uh, but you can go to stock images. And this is where I got this image from here. And there are loads of fantastic Creative Commons free images that you can use inside uh, PowerPoint from here. And you can also then do an online search for uh, pictures as well. So there's lots of ways you could bring stuff in. So what I've done is I have brought in a picture of a coral reef. It's not animated, it's just a standard uh, photograph there in the background. And what I've done to our little fish character down here is I've ad added a few little bits of animation. So the first thing that I have added onto it, if I go into my animation pane here a second. Okay, the first one I've done is to add a motion path, the move option to make it move from one side to the other. And you can see that's in place there. I've also made it happen at the same time for it to use that swing animation as well. So what we'll see now from adding those two things on, and again, this is not hard at all. OK, um, if I just run uh, this slide a second. What we'll get to see is the effects of the clownfish moving from the one side. You can see he's sort of swimming a little bit already, and keeping on swimming. And here he is just simply animated and moving across it. Now, what if your child had been doing some creative writing about this journey a fish was having to take across the sea to maybe find his son or something else that is inspiring the student? What if they actually wrote that story and this is part of the vehicle they use for telling that story. Here we're tying together all sorts of things. We've got the creativity elements. We've got the literacy, the writing, the story writing. We've got digital literacy. Um, and you know, when, when students are creating something which is as, and this is just amazing. Um, to think that we're doing, I mean, I, I mentioned how, how uh, paint was when I first started teaching. Um, I think about how you know how PowerPoint was back then as well. I never thought I'd get to a point in time where I'd be doing things like this inside PowerPoint. It's absolutely crazy that you can do these sorts of things. So what I'd like us to try and think about now is how we can go about doing some of these things ourselves. So um, these sessions are um, designed to um, be inspiring and hopefully the ideas and things I'm sharing with you are making your heads go, oh my goodness, I could do it for this and could do it for that. So I hope you find that you're having those sorts of experiences. But what I want to do as well is give you the opportunity to have a little go yourselves. OK, so um, I sort of asked the question, how do we do it? Well, I've kind of shown you that bit now. So what I want to do now is sort of hand it over to you a little bit. So I'm going to uh, stop 
sharing my screen. I should jump back into uh, Teams a second. And I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, welcome to everybody. I can see some of your names now. Thank you for turning your uh, microphones off, Jason and uh, Beth and Paul and Cheryl and so forth and so on. Thank you so much for that. But uh, what I'd like us to have a little go at now is having a go at doing some of these things yourself and on a simple level. OK, and um, feel free to uh, send some messages through in the chat um, on the side. You may have done it already. I'll open it up in a second. Uh, but I'd like you to have a little go using Paint 3D yourself now to get yourself a little wireframe model, do a little bit of colouring in on it, and then see if you can get that over into uh, PowerPoint and just try and apply a few animations to it for yourself to see how that works for you. So I'm just going to stop uh, sharing my screen. There we go. And uh, I'm going to open up the uh, conversation on the side here. I can see lots of people uh, are in here and you've all joined the meeting, Miss G, Broadhead and so forth and so on. If anyone would like to bring their camera on or turn their microphone on, uh, then I'd be very happy to uh, sort of discuss these things with you and have a little chat about how we do it, so forth and so on. Uh, what power, uh, version of PowerPoint is needed? Good question. Um, I just have the latest uh, version of PowerPoint, so I don't know uh, off the top of my head uh, which version it is, um, but it is the, the, the latest version. I'm running Windows 10 and uh, it's the most up to date version of PowerPoint. That said, uh, Roberta, um, I have been doing this in PowerPoint in, win, uh, in Windows for a good few years, so um, this isn't new, uh, sort of more advanced um, last week need updated from last week sort of things I'm sharing with you. Um, so it would uh, depend on on the age of your devices in your schools and, and what uh, operating system you're using with it and, and all of those sorts of things. Um, absolutely, um, Beth. Uh, in fact, I um, as I mentioned at the beginning, my son managed to break my stylus last night. So I've ordered a new one um, today, but I've done everything today with my uh, finger um, um, or my mouse trackpad. And um, if I can just show you now, I'll just jump back into um, paint a second and just share my screen again. Um, but essentially, yeah, everything I've done today, uh, you can simply do um, with your mouse um, or trackpad, whatever you've got on your device. Um, is there a difference, a uh, question from Jason as well. Um, is there a difference between uh, um, between the web and the app versions? Uh, yeah, you, so this is uh, something which works in the local version of PowerPoint uh, on your actual device. Um, I've not seen it available to better do all these, these, these things using PowerPoint online. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, regulations, rules and, and all of that are in um, other countries, but in uh, the UK, at least, if you've got Office 365 for Education and have the licenses for it, uh, there's the option of allowing um, uh, PowerPoint to be installed on devices of students at home as well. So um, again, check with your network manager, your technicians, if you've got that set up for your school, um, but that's something that could be on offer, particularly under, under home learning activities. Uh, so if they've got PowerPoint at home on their home devices, uh, then it works as well. Um, regarding um, if a family um, has an, a, 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 a different device other than the Windows device, I know that it doesn't work in um, PowerPoint on other um, laptops other than Windows ones as well. How do you insert an audio file in your fish slide uh, to tell the story instead of writing? Uh, great question, Beth. Uh, so let me just jump into my share screen again because I was going to do that anyway. Let me share that there and just jump back into PowerPoint uh, like so. So when we're running a presentation, uh, there's a variety of ways we can do this. We can actually record the audio on top whilst we're running the presentation. Uh, we can also go into um, here and uh, we can record uh, the slideshow as well. And this is probably the option that I would go for. 
OK, is I would go to the slideshow, get ready. I'd hit record slideshow and then within there, there's the opportunity to record narration over the slides and you can tie it into things like Microsoft Stream and send it through to there and so forth and so on. Stop sharing that in a second. Uh, can I export the images and add them to other apps, e.g. Flipgrid, to have them uh, on the screen when I'm talking uh, or would I have to record it in PowerPoint and upload? Yeah, record it in PowerPoint and then upload is uh, my uh, understanding, Gary. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback there, Beth. That's lovely of you. Thank you. So there are lots and lots of um, ways in which this can be applied. I mean, I, I mentioned to uh, Roberta when uh, and we first started the session today, uh, this was going to be primary focused. I'm actually a secondary teacher. That's um, the K-12, uh, the, the older students, age 11 to 18 students is my background for teaching. Um, but I can see it's being used in, in lots of different ways. Uh, I, say I, I gave the geography example before. It's one of those things where you know your, your imagination is, the, is uh, the limitation. But again, showing these sort of things to your learners uh, and uh, showing them what is actually possible. Often, I, even, even now, whenever I talk to young people and I show them these things, they're so, so inspired and can come really amazing creative ways. When you know what is possible, uh, then they can do some amazing things with it. Uh, so how's everybody else getting on with uh, having a little play around at all? Anybody having uh, any success with that? OK, well, hopefully you're having some success with that. Uh, Roberta says, unfortunately, I'm struggling with permissions on a new uh, work laptop, just trying to install Paint 3D and lots of options I haven't explored before. That's good to um, hear, Jason. Um, <clears throat> when you have time to see what's possible, I believe the global pandemic is helping us provide us. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, talk about stepping outside your comfort zone. Um, but I'm, I'm a huge advocate for making sure that, you know, technology uh, I, did, I did a quite a few presentations, but I often share that just because you can do something with technology doesn't mean it's necessarily that you should. And a healthy dose of so what um, yeah, is, is uh, so all right, so I can do that. So what? <clears throat> but sometimes what I think is helpful is if you then flip it around to so that. OK, so so, all right, so I can use animations in PowerPoint. So what? Well, so that I can explain things that I would find it more difficult to be able to do. For example, that 3D model of the heart there that I showed before, and that's why I, I showed it. Um, you know, there are there are um, you know plenty of uh, 3D models in there that I think would uh, would anyone any any teacher would struggle to find a, a genuine um, need to uh, or want to use um, it, to support their teaching or student learning. But there are loads and loads of them, such as that heart model there, which do. And so the so that bit is the so that I can show things to my learners um, that wouldn't be possible without the technology or wouldn't be as easily able to do without the technology, so forth and so on. So that's a, a, a handy thing there to think and, and have in the back of your head, because, you know, um, if, if you're going to be using these sorts of technologies um, just because you can, just to show off what you can, then that's sometimes not really the best way to think about doing these things with technology. But when you're thinking about doing them to support creativity, it could be, you know, if you're working with very, very young children, you're, you're, you're thinking about things like fine motor control, your ability to actually use some of these tools. And it's also, uh, I think, really important to bear in mind as well, um, where people's sort of levels of confidence and competence are. So you know, some of the things you can do with technology is fantastic, but it takes you hours to make these things. Well, if you're using it as part of what you do, and hopefully today it's been clear to you that the things I've shared with you are really simple and easy to do. When you've got things that are this easy and simple to do, 
surely you know it would be a fantastic thing to try and use and choose to use within your presentations just an example of using some of those um uh, models that are built into PowerPoint, for example, of the um, sort of avatars of humans. You can have one of those which represents yourself, and so you could have that person represented on your slides. Many of you will be creating recordings of your slides um, to put onto Teams to provide sort of more asynchronous lessons rather than synchronous lessons, uh, adding things through into stream and, and all these different ways of doing things. By using a nice 3D model of yourself on the side where you're sort of gesticulating and then using the features that are available through the uh, animations, that's another way of sort of connecting yourself with your learners a little bit more. They can't actually see you, um, but having an avatar there to represent you uh, is again another way of connecting with your uh, with your learners. Because um, I'm sure they miss you terribly if, if you're not actually in school with them and you're providing learning in these sorts of ways as well. Uh, where can I find good examples of external 3D models other than in paint? Great uh, question. I think it was Gary Morgan, wasn't it, Gary? Um, yeah, so there are loads and loads of places you can go uh, to find um, uh, different uh, things online for that purpose. Um, I did have a website up. Just give me a second. Uh, I did have a website up. I think I've closed it. Uh, so let's see if I can bring that back up again. No, that tab's completely gone, I'm afraid, Gary. Uh, what I'll do is um, I will put into the show notes and get it put onto the YouTube channel. And, and um, another quick way of doing that as well, Gary, after the session, uh, I'll pop um, a bunch of resources um, onto Twitter. I'll, if you if you go to my um, tweet about this session, I'll, uh, I'll reply to that tweet and I'll pop a bunch of resources in there uh, as well. I don't have them on this laptop at the moment uh, to share with you, sorry. It's a great question and there are lots of different places uh, you can go to get these models from. Yeah, I don't have them here, unfortunately, uh, Beth. Um, there are some you can see when you go into um, PowerPoint. Let's jump into the inserts and 3D models uh, section again here. Wait for those to come up. No, it's not coming up, unfortunately. I'll, I'll pop them into um, the notes afterwards, if that's all right with you. Um, rather than uh, spend time searching for it in front of you and wasting your time, and it'll be easier for you to find. Did anybody else have any other questions about anything at all? That's great, Roberta. Thank you for that feedback. Roberta and I were talking just before we started, um, and uh, I was saying, you know, it's great for you to doing this sort of thing with younger children. Um, I'd, I'd say, Somebody asked a question before uh, about uh, what version it might be new, Roberta, actually, as well, and um, what version of PowerPoint is that? So I've, I've been doing this with my children. My children are age nine and 11, so they're, they're in year four and year six. But I've been doing this for a few years with them, and they absolutely love it. Um, and um, they sort of made their own sort of um, versions of Minecraft characters in um, Paint 3D um, and uh, then brought them through and done some little animations with them and told little stories as well. Um, and I've been doing this for years. It's um, it's really inspiring for them. So there's, there's so many ways you can sort of apply this sort of idea of using these 3D models in PowerPoint. Um, and again, I mentioned the storytelling things. Um, I, I'm, I've, I'm of an age where I remember as a child, I used to read these sort of little adventure books um, where you'd have um, you get to a, a certain place and you can make a decision you can create branching stories in powerpoints through hyperlinks uh, so you know you, sh you show a little bit and at the end is a decision making process and you can click on one option to go to one place and you can click on another one to go to another place <clears throat> and what you can do with that um, is once you've done that you can make a choice so it's almost like a microphone on uh, which is fine um, coming back to me a little bit, that might be Paul. Um, but um, 
yeah, you can make it when you save it to PowerPoint show so that you don't click through the presentation like a linear presentation. When you get presented with an option of going clicking on here or clicking on here, it can go to one of two places as part of a story. Now, if you start incorporating that into it, you're taking things to a completely different level then um, in terms of uh, thinking about computing, flow diagrams, you've got maths and numeracy in there with that. You've got so many different things you could tie into using PowerPoint for those particular purposes of storytelling. Yeah, 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 that's a type of doc, but absolutely right, yeah. There you go, apologies, Paul, I just muted you. I thought you, you had your microphone on to ask the question. Ah, Paul, I've turned it off for you, Paul. Thank you so much. Well, look, everybody, um, please do. Um, uh, if, you, if you've got some follow up questions after the session today, uh, then uh, please do uh, ping them across to me on Twitter at ICT Evangelist. Um, if you're not a Twitter user, my website is ictevangelist.com. If you go to that uh, address, ictevangelist.com slash contact, uh, if you've got follow up questions, then you can drop me a line uh, there as well if you don't use uh, Twitter, and that's absolutely fine. Um, please do check out the hashtag um, WeRQ and uh, GETA, the Global EdTech Academy. And if you're looking for more inspiration, as well, the Microsoft Edu uh, account and hashtag, and of course the MIE expert hashtags are all fantastic places to go for ideas um, and um, conversations um, about all things to do with Microsoft and using their tools in the classroom. It's a great way as well, uh, using those hashtags. Often I found this when I didn't have many followers. Um, using hashtags was a great way of um, Oh, brilliant stuff, Paul. I'd love to see it. Thank you. Um, Paul just said to us in the chat, I'll send you a link to my presentation. Thank you, Paul. I'd love to see it. Um, yeah, if, if you haven't got many followers uh, and you're asking questions, please do tag me into a tweet, uh, but also use the hashtag. People often use the hashtag to see what's being discussed on that trend. And it's, again, a great way of amplifying any questions or things you want to share on a particular topic. That's lovely feedback, uh, Paul. Thank you ever so much. Uh, I try to try and keep things simple in, in the sessions and give a little bit of time to play and be here to answer questions and things. Uh, so I really appreciate that feedback. That's really very kind of you. Um, if there are no further questions, uh, I know we're all busy people, so I will uh, end it there. Um, but as I said, there are multiple ways that you can get in touch with me and uh, I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Yes, uh, Cheryl, I will absolutely put my Twitter handle in the chat. And my Twitter handle is at ICT Evangelist, E V A N G E L I S T, like that. And if you look, oh, that's not how it is actually. I'll, I'll type that again. There it is. And if you want to have a direct link to where it is, There's a direct link, direct link uh, to where you can find it on Twitter as well. And if you want my contact details uh, directly, uh, there is my uh, contact page on my website. All these videos and sessions are being recorded, uh, as I said earlier, and um, uh, I'm recording this session and uh, I'll be sh sharing this and saving this back to Q, who will be uh, they'll top and tail you with some bumpers, I think, uh, da -da 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 -da, sort of thing. Um, and then uh, it'll be available on the Q YouTube channel. So uh, brilliant stuff. So thank you very much for all of you for attending. I'm really, really, really pumped that you found it useful. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to come and join me today. Take care, everybody, and be safe and, and look after yourselves. Um, these are strange and scary times, so please do keep yourself safe. Thank you ever so much for coming today. Take care.